Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you and to develop some ideas about museums and their communities. And I'm very much aware that I speak about museums in general and about the issue in very general terms. I do not specifically relate to this museum, uh, neither this type of museum. So I'm not specifically speaking about art museums and my, my examples will probably more about cultural history, well, it's again definition, but another type of museum than the museum where uh, we are sitting uh, uh, now. So I hope you're not disappointed if you expect me to speak about art museums and their publics, but well, I will not do so. But I think, I hope, there is some relevancy in the concepts that I would like to develop throughout my lecture for any type of museum. That has very much to do with how we address our audience. As I will try to, to develop uh, more and more, we tend to speak about our audience in terms of communities. I will come back to that, but if, for example, um, uh, you read recent publications uh, on museum communication, it's about communities rather than about individuals. So it's important, I think, to reflect upon this idea of community. How this idea of community is reflected in our work, both in uh, our exhibitions, in our presentations, as well as in our uh, way, the way we conceptualize our audience. And of course, we as persons, we are all very much aware uh, about this, this issue of being part of a community or perhaps not wanting to be part of a community. Yeah, there is always this tension uh, between how we perceive ourselves as an individual and groups we are supposed to be part of. I had that experience uh, this day, two weeks ago, when I was invited uh, by the Dutch embassy to celebrate uh, our new king. As you know, I'm Dutch, so I have a king now. But here we have a fundamental problem, because how Dutch am I? Do I define myself as being Dutch. Well, I cannot deny that I'm being Dutch and I'm not ashamed of being Dutch. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but am I proud to be Dutch? Do I always want to be addressed as being Dutch? I'm not so sure about that. But in the context of the celebration two weeks ago in the uh, Dutch amb ambassador in Vilnius, I was clearly labeled as being Dutch. There were, in this party, three groups that were very clearly labeled as three different communities. There was the diplomatic community. They know each other very well, and they were talking among each other. Not to me, because I'm not part of this diplomatic community, and I was excluded to some extent. I did not have decorations, I did not have a uniform, I did not have any sort of function in that field. There was also very clearly a Lithuanian community that was invited. Well, I'm not Lithuanian, I cannot speak the language, so I felt also excluded by that group of people. So, in the end, I happened to be Dutch. And I must admit, I had difficulties in identifying myself with this Dutch community too, because all these other Dutch, they were having some orange sort of decoration, because they, living here in Lithuania, they were proud to be Dutch, so they wanted to show the Dutch, the Dutchness. Well, I didn't have anything orange. I'm a Republican, I'm not a royalist, so I was wondering myself what I was doing there, but there were free drinks and herring, so that was okay. The first Dutch person that was introduced to me, in the end, didn't want to talk to me, because I was from Amsterdam, and he was from Rotterdam. So being Dutch was 
in, even in that context, something problematic. Yeah? Being Dutch was not sufficient to identify myself. I was labeled, identified as a person from Amsterdam. And well, you should know about Dutch situation, but people of Amsterdam and people of Rotterdam, they do not go very well together sometimes. Uh, you have your own examples, but I don't want to go into that. Well, it may be uh, some sort of ridiculous, irrelevant sort of case uh, uh, study. And I'm not uh, mentioning it uh, because of its importance and its relevancy, but just to map out the sort of basic dilemmas uh, that uh, is the core of uh, my presentation of today. Uh, uh, how do we consider ourselves, but how are we considered? How are museums uh, as power structures uh, defining their subjects uh, in the context of exhibitions and their audience in terms of uh, visitors or intended visitors? Maybe to emphasize my point and to stress the importance of it, uh, I want to uh, refer to another experience I had uh, uh, two days ago, three days ago by now. I was in uh, Mauthausen in, in Austria, and it's by coincidence. Uh, but uh, I was um, very, well, well, it was a very interesting sort of experience to uh, uh, see how in the course of the development of uh, this memorial site, how this definition of communities involved in this uh, prisoner cancer concentration camp, how um, it, it, it de developed. In the uh, entrance on the right hand side you have this uh, memorial uh, panel um, made by the Soviets. Uh, the camp was liberated by the US Army, but uh, then uh, very soon the Soviets took control of Austria and uh, they initially turned this site into a memorial uh, site and immediately uh, uh, added some monuments and uh, memorial panels. And my attention was drawn to this uh, panel uh, here, which uh, uh, says something about the communities that should be commemorated there. Well, it's too small uh, print uh, to read it, but the uh, essence uh, here is that the victims were defined as being uh, civilians, uh, citizens, as citizens of country. So there's a list of countries and it says citizens of this country, citizens of that country, and then the number of victims here. With two exceptions, the Soviets were not defined as citizens, they were defined as military people. And citizens uh, that were killed, massacred here in this uh, site from uh, Germany and Austria were not defined as citizens, but as anti-fascists. So obviously there was some sort of distinction between citizens of Italy, Spain, Netherlands, and citizens of Germany and Austria. Obviously, uh, the citizens of Germany and Austria were defined as anti-fascist, and the citizens of Netherlands, Spain, Italy were not specified. They were just citizens. And this reflection, I think, uh, the interpretation of the Soviets uh, in, 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 in this case is, is relevant because their definitions of citizens, the definition uh, of these communities, was very different from the Nazi classification of communities. In the Nazi classification, there was hardly distinction between countries, but there was a distinction uh, as to the reason why these prisoners were in this camp. Because these prisoners, um, there were Jews, there were uh, Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, there were homosexuals, there were Roma and Sinti, 
That's why they were there. And the sign, complicated sign system indicated them as communities. And so in this first uh, period of this site as a memorial site, obviously uh, the Soviets did not want to identify the victims according to this classification. There were citizens. There were no homosexuals, Jews, Sinti, Roma, Jehovah Witnesses. Those categories were not comfortable to the Soviets. So I think this comes closer to what I <coughs> would like to uh, uh, develop. And this idea of <coughs> community. Who is defining community? And what are the ideological biases in this definition? Is this community defining itself? Are others defining this community and how does one relate to the other? And it has very much to do with the relevancy of this uh, uh, discussion. It has very much to do with this concept of social inclusion. Uh, who is included or who is excluded? Who does belong to the community? Who does explicitly do not belong to the community? And I think museum work is very much connected with this concept of social inclusion. Uh, who is included as part of the presentation? Who, who is included as a part of our visitors? Who is excluded? Perhaps not because we want to exclude uh, people, but it may be a sort of unwanted side effect of our uh, approach. So it is uh, very much about injustice by exclusion, but at the same time also injustice by inclusion. It's, uh, in, in fact, uh, we can uh, ask ourselves uh, uh, whether it's ethical uh, to make a distinction between uh, groups. Every uh, distinction is, as you uh, know, uh, artificial, of course. And um, um, so you can say, well, it's uh, unfair, uh, it is racist in another uh, context uh, uh, to make an explicit distinction between groups, the injustice by exclusion. But at the same time, as I uh, tried to uh, illustrate by this example from uh, uh, Mauthausen, it may be uh, considered to be unethical not to make a distinction and to consider everybody equal. I hope I'm not misunderstood. I'm not suggesting that a certain groups should have different uh, rights. The issue here is that everybody should have equal rights as to access, representation, and uh, participation. Uh, that is the basic prim principles of social inclusion. And when I speak about uh, inclusion, exclusion, when I speak uh, about injustice, it has to do in the context of my lecture of uh, today, it has, uh, uh, about, it has to do with access, uh, access to uh, our work, our buildings, and our programs, uh, representation, how communities are represented in, in our work, and uh, participation, uh, to what extent we invite uh, uh, members of different communities uh, to be part uh, of uh, our, our work. Um, as I um, uh, uh, try to, 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 to make clear, it, it may not be a deliberate uh, decision by us to exclude uh, people. It may be a sort of side effect, an unexpected side effect uh, that we may be not aware of. Uh, this is um, an, an example from Linz Mauthaus, is called I, uh, Linz, uh, and in the, uh, one of the museums in, in, in Linz, uh, they uh, uh, did have a program, a Cafe, a memory cafe. And the idea is to bring together uh, the people of, of, of Linz, especially elderly uh, people of Linz, uh, around certain themes. So they're inviting with this uh, sort of uh, brochures, uh, they're inviting people to share uh, memories to share objects uh, as a way of 
Partic uh, inviting uh, people to uh, participate in the work of the museum because these uh, stories that I tell could be added to the uh, uh, museum archive, the museum collection. But well, it's, it's German and it's small print, you uh, may not be able to, to read it uh, from back there. Uh, but the point that I want to make is that it looks inclusive, yeah? it, it do, does not specify to certain groups of, of people. But at the same time, by not specifying, a lot of people perhaps would not feel to be invited. Uh, uh, as you can clearly see, this photograph uh, is not specific. Uh, it's not stated these are ladies belonging to that, that communities, but it, it's clear, uh, it's a sort of implicit message that some people are not included. Now, Austria is a different uh, society than uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I think, uh, relatively speaking, the Netherlands is more cultural and ethnic uh, diverse than, than, than Austria, but, but, but still, uh, in, in, in the Netherlands, this would uh, also in, in, in Germany, the major cities in Germany, uh, like, like Berlin, Köln, uh, or major city, it would perhaps be a, a problem because by addressing a potential audience like this, uh, you almost exclude people in the sense that uh, a lot of groups, uh, uh, cultural, ethnic uh, groups in society, would not feel to be invited. And you, you can understand why I'm saying this. But, uh, in, in the Netherlands, we have law in uh, cities like Amsterdam and Rotterdam, and we have large communities of people coming from Suriname, uh, from Morocco, uh, from, from Turkey, uh, also from uh, 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 countries from Africa, like Ghana and, 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 and Nigeria. So there's a, a very diverse a, a, a group of people, a very uh, diverse group of communities, but only a small part of these communities uh, would feel invited. So the end result is a very narrow, uh, narrow interpretation of the past. It's only the memory uh, of a very small group of, of people that is added uh, uh, to the collection of the uh, museum. But these are the sort of issues uh, uh, that um, uh, I'm very interested uh, in and, and that we explore in the field of the theory of museology. Uh, when you look at contemporary publications on museology, uh, very often referred to as new <laughs> museology, is about this. It's about representation, it's about access, it's about participation, about the biases in making definitions, about the biases in uh, inviting uh, uh, people. And I think um, uh, theory, as I understand it, uh, should reflect on this practice and help to make clear what the biases uh, uh, are and how we conceptualize uh, uh, these uh, sort of uh, uh, issues. Uh, because the way we conceptualize these issues has a very uh, important ethical dimension. Uh, basically, it's about ethics. It's about our social responsibility our social responsibility as institutions, our social responsibility as uh, uh, individual uh, professionals. About uh, the way we conceptualize these uh, issues, uh, uh, some important publications uh, uh, have been published uh, uh, recent, uh, recently. I hope many of you are aware of ICOM, the International Council of Museums. I even hope that many of you are members of ICOM. But on the ICOM website, you can find uh, this uh, booklet. Uh, you can download it for free. A uh, key concept of museology, which helps us uh, to, to, to understand uh, the, the problems in using specific terms for uh, specific uh, 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 practices and, and ideas. A more elaborate uh, publication, but in French, is the uh, uh, encyclopedia uh, that is connected 
previous uh, publication uh, published uh, by François Marès and uh, André uh, de Vallée. In my lectures, this is the fourth of a uh, uh, series, um, I'm, I'm using uh, uh, these publications and this, the thinking behind these uh, publications to analyze uh, the way we conceptualize, for example, uh, 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 collecting. And when we uh, uh, look at, at the international professional discourse about collecting, you see that uh, we tend to use a term uh, collection development uh, rather than collecting. Uh, collecting is sort of old uh, way of conceptualizing this type of uh, museum activity. Uh, a, a new way of conceptualizing is collection development. And of course one is connected with the other, uh, collecting adds uh, to the quality of uh, the collection, but the, the new thinking behind the term collection development is that perhaps you can also improve the quality of a collection by removing objects uh, uh, from a collection. Uh, 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 there is, uh, an, 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 uh, I'm not sure about Lithuania and this museum, uh, but um, internationally, there is sort of a, a new awareness that deaccessioning, uh, disposal, removing objects from a collection can also contribute uh, uh, to the quality of the collection, which is a quite uh, heretic and revolutionary uh, uh, idea uh, that's connected with an older way of conceptualizing collections and improving the quality of the collection. In um, one of the other um, uh, uh, public lectures, uh, I uh, spoke at length about uh, conceptualizing educational work. It makes a difference if we speak about education or about learning. Uh, education uh, represents a sort of old school approach to working with uh, communities. Because education as, as a term, well, of course, we have a sort of semantic problem not being uh, English ourselves, uh, but, but uh, basically e education is about a person uh, deciding what is relevant for another person. Uh, uh, as an educator, uh, you have a sort of message uh, to bring uh, to, to the group. You decide uh, the parameters of uh, the communication uh, process. Learning is something different. Learning is uh, that the learner decides what and how he or she wants to learn. So it's a different sort of perspective on this, this process. Uh, it's the perspective of the, um, um, the, the educator deciding about the process and as alternative, uh, the learner deciding about the process. And that's why, if you look at contemporary publications on uh, educational work in museums, uh, in the United Kingdom, for example, uh, most of the contemporary publications use the term learning. But there is a sort of new uh, approach, and I don't want to develop uh, this uh, further, uh, but a new way of conceptualizing this uh, communication process is experience. And experience gives an other sort of dimension uh, to the uh, process, uh, to how you organize the process and who is in control uh, on uh, the um, outcome of this uh, process. So just uh, two examples uh, how uh, the terms that we use, uh, the, uh, how we conceptualize uh, uh, our work, uh, has far-reaching uh, consequences. Uh, uh, they reflect new approaches, but at the same time, uh, by using these terms, uh, you advocate these new approaches. But when it comes to the theme of uh, uh, this uh, af af afternoon, I think it makes a difference uh, how we conceptualize uh, our audience uh, we can speak about audience uh, and, or publics uh, and do we refer uh, to the people outside, people passing this building or do we refer to the people entering this building? Uh, 
I'm looking to the old entrance, but, but um, uh, that in itself uh, uh, makes a difference. Uh, uh, we, uh, who do we have in mind? Uh, the people out there or the people in here? What's the relation between uh, these uh, two concepts? And if we speak about people that are visiting us, do we use a sort of neutral term of visitor? Or do we use the term guest? And it, what, what is behind the use of this, this term? What does it say about our approach uh, to these uh, visitors? And um, well, many authors uh, uh, have suggested uh, that we should conceptualize our visitors in terms of guests. Because we should be happy that they're here. Uh, people have a right to visit. It's not a privilege to visit. As a right privilege, uh, these uh, concepts are behind the use of the term guest. But a more contemporary, I think, uh, a guest was something of uh, 10, 15 uh, years ago. Now uh, you see that we conceptualize our visitors in, in terms of users. It's, it's, um, it's a different, uh, different approach, a different understanding uh, about the communication between our institutions and the people that are interested uh, in, 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 in our work. And it extends, in fact, uh, uh, the role of uh, uh, the products that we have on offer. Uh, we do not just have our permanent and temporary uh, uh, galleries. Uh, we do have the library, I passed the library here. It's a part of the services that the museum has to offer. Concepts. Uh, the museum has a, a variety of, of products and it is emphasizing uh, the richness of what we have to offer uh, as institutions to uh, uh, society. Uh, uh, and, and you can conceptualize uh, uh, the visitor to uh, a library in terms of a visitor, but it would perhaps be more productive uh, to, um, to use the term user, which again uh, brings in a sort of uh, initiative by the, um, uh, by, by the user yeah, and, and defining the parameters of, of use by the user rather than by the institution. And we can extend the uh, uh, number of terms related uh, uh, to people making use uh, of our, our products. And, and for a long time, uh, marketing people were influencing the discourse and uh, uh, using the term uh, target group. Uh, but target group is again uh, sort of conceptualizing uh, uh, a sort of uh, instrumentalized uh, uh, attitude uh, towards uh, uh, visitors and potential uh, uh, visitors. And gradually, uh, the term target group is being, being replaced by stakeholder. Uh, very uh, fashionable uh, term nowadays, uh, uh, perhaps even more fashionable than user, uh, stakeholders. And there, again, there is a, a different sort of uh, perspective involved in using this, this term, saying, well, there are different groups of people, uh, different communities having a stake in the work of the museum. That may be the visitors, but not necessarily just the visitors. There may be other people with a certain uh, interest. Uh, people that uh, may be defined or redefined as participants, which involves, again, uh, uh, other approaches than just user. Uh, uh, people uh, uh, can use your products, but that will not directly affect uh, the content of the product and the way the product is presented. But a participant is going one step further. It's a more active role of the user and is reflecting on a possible um, um, uh, consequence of the use. Uh, it, it's um, uh, bringing in a sort of influence of the users in uh, the product and the way the product is uh, presented. And it goes even uh, one uh, step uh, further when we use the term co-creator. That's one of the uh, most um, uh, fashionable terms at the moment. 
uh, talking about audiences in terms of co-creators, uh, inviting people to play a very uh, active role, uh, perhaps even uh, being more as just an, a, a participant, uh, making decisions, making, uh, uh, being part of the decision-making processes, uh, what products uh, should be uh, offered, in particular uh, exhibitions, but not necessarily just exhibitions. Uh, co co-creation uh, can be extended to research programs, uh, to documentation programs, uh, and perhaps in uh, certain situations also uh, to conservation uh, programs. And the point that I, uh, uh, I think I want to, to make is that um, uh, it may be interesting to, uh, uh, to conceptualize uh, audiences uh, in, in another way. And, and, and uh, I, uh, my proposal here is to use the term uh, community uh, to conceptualize our visitors, guests, users, target groups, uh, stakeholders, participants, co-creators in terms of communities. And that is uh, what is uh, happening, for example, uh, in, uh, uh, in the ICOM Court of Ethics. And if you are a member of ICOM, you are aware of the ICOM Court of Ethics, uh, the present version uh, from uh, 2004. And in uh, this Code of Ethics, uh, you do not find the term guest but uh, you uh, find uh, the term uh, visitor, you find the term uh, user, but uh, it mainly uses the term uh, uh, community, but uh, different, different ways. It, it uh, speaks about a community uh, served, it speaks about community of origin, it speaks about constituent community, and it speaks about contemporary community. Uh, four different ways of conceptualizing uh, the interaction between society at large and our institution. Of course, the term society is also used, uh, but co to conceptualize uh, society at large, uh, they use the term community. And uh, uh, they uh, speak about the relation between museum and society in terms of relation between uh, museums and communities and emphasizing the fact that a museum has to deal with a diversity of communities, different types of communities. And the communities of origin are the communities that are, in the that are at the basis of the collection. Perhaps in this museum uh, it's, it's more complicated but uh, it's simple to think about uh, history museums, about anthropology museums, there's a, a clear a community of origin. An anthropology uh, a museum has a clear definition of community of origin, being certain villages in Africa, Latin America, uh, whatever. There you have a well-defined uh, well uh, community of, uh, of origin. But uh, what does that mean? Uh, what, what, what does this concept of source community, it's another uh, term for the same uh, phenomenon, uh, 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 how does it relate to the concept of community served? Is there a distinction between source community and a community served? And what does it mean when you make this, this distinction? Is the community of origin, is the source community a community that as a museum should that as a museum you should serve, do you as a museum have a responsibility to the uh, community of, uh, of origin? Well, it, it's not an open question because uh, uh, the philosophy behind uh, the Icon Code of Ethics is that the museum has a very clear responsibility to the source communities. Uh, the uh, museum has a very explicit responsibility to the communities where the collections uh, come, come from. So these communities of origin, the source communities, are 
communities that the regime should serve. But the source communities are usually not the constituent communities. They are usually not the communities that founded the museum. Usually, there is this source community as the other community, and the constituent community, the community that founded the museum. And how does the two communities relate? Can the museum serve both communities at the same time? Then, contemporary community, well, it's clear it's the community here and now. Maybe not the same as the constituent community. The community that founded the museum may be a community of the past. And how does this community of the past relate to the community in the present? Can you, as a museum, serve both interests? Can you respect the interest of the constituent community at the same time that you respect the interest of this uh, contemporary community? And how does it relate to the community of origin if that is a third party? Can you, as a museum, serve the interest of these three communities at the same time? Do you want to do that? The ICOM code suggests that you should, but it's not always uh, possible. There are conflicts of interests uh, between, for example, resource communities and contemporary communities. If the source community is a village in Africa, uh, uh, to, to stereotype uh, 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 ethnographical museum, if it's a community in Africa, uh, how uh, does the norms, the values of that community relate to our norms and values here? Shall we respect uh, taboos. Uh, if you have objects from a certain community where objects uh, have a certain taboo that objects may not be uh, uh, seen or touched by women, for example, uh, shall we respect that? If you have an object with a certain taboo, can you show it in your museum? We hardly have taboos. In our context, uh, social context here, uh, 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 women and men have the same sort of rights to s see things, but in the community of origin, that might not be so. So, which rule, uh, which ethics to, to follow? So, that's what I think is important. It's important in uh, conceptualizing. Uh, the groups of people that we are working uh, with and the different interests uh, of this group of people. And that has al always to do with this notion of so social inclusion. Uh, it, it is to what extent we include or exclude uh, a certain uh, uh, co com com communities. Yeah, uh, access, uh, but in particular uh, representation and participation. But in, in, in the example that I was using, uh, in particular representation. Yeah? If we show something about uh, a community, uh, how uh, does that relate uh, uh, to the ethics of, of uh, other uh, communities? In the past, it hardly played a role. In the past, we were not so uh, much concerned about that. And in the past, uh, that may be the past of 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, whatever. And there was a, a, a very uh, clear idea about constituent uh, community and contemporary community that was the same. And the primary uh, responsibility of the museum was to its uh, constituency, uh, to the constituent community and the contemporary community. The other communities uh, uh, were of lesser uh, importance. Now in our new uh, ethics, uh, we feel that we do have a responsibility, uh, but we do not have a solution. And so we are using increasingly communities, uh, uh, but uh, uh, we do not have the uh, proper uh, tools to balance uh, the different interests, the rights, of the different community. 
and to add to uh, uh, the, the problem of using uh, community. Here you have an example of conflicting communities. Yeah? You are very quiet listening to me. There is another community that are to some extent disturbing us. They have their own rights, but their rights are not the same as our rights. So how to balance? Well, the director, they, <laughs> he told them to be quiet. Yeah? So obviously we have more rights than they. Should that be? As a sort of open question. Yeah? Um, but well, it, 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 it's a small example of what, what I mean. Yeah? That there are different norms and values, different behavior, different expectations. And they can be slightly different, but they can be enormously uh, different. But potentially, there's always this uh, a conflict. Yeah? When it comes to school groups and other uh, groups in, in museums, there's always this, this, this tension, and you're all professionals, you are professional museum visitors, uh, so like me, uh, uh, you, you love to see a museum after six o'clock. Yeah? When all these visitors are gone, uh, then a museum is nice. All these other visitors, they are so disturbing. So some museums have a policy uh, to have school groups before 10, uh, so the museum is quiet after 10. I'm not sure here, well, obviously not here, but I know some museums that have this, this pol policy. So uh, exclusion, uh, uh, a community, uh, a defined community, that's your place, your time, and you're another community, so that's your place and, and your time. That is, I think, not the sort of solution that I uh, 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 am favoring. Yeah? I'm looking for ways to combine, combine the interest and perhaps uh, use these interests uh, to create something new, a sort of negotiating between these interests to achieve a sort of common understanding and mutual respect between these different uh, uh, groups. Uh, in, in this particular case, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, it, it might be interesting uh, to find a way to connect uh, groups of elderly people with groups of young children. And not to separate them, not to say, well, young children should visit the museum before 10, elderly people after 10, but uh, to create a sort of condition that uh, exchange is possible, uh, that elderly people can connect with very young people. And maybe some very creative sort of uh, ideas will come up uh, at the benefit of mutual understanding of, the both, uh, of both groups. Well, this potential tension between uh, uh, communities and the increasing use of this concept of community, but uh, the uh, uh, potential tension that goes with it, um, uh, is uh, something that I would like to um, illustrate uh, on the hand of, uh, on the basis of uh, uh, two examples uh, uh, from uh, Lithuania. I hope you allow me, being Dutch, to say something about Lithuania. Uh, 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 since uh, uh, this is the first time of my life I'm in Kornos, uh, the example will be from Vilnius. So that will be pleasant for you, to, well, assuming that you are from Konas and not Vilnius. Maybe the next time in Vilnius I will use Konas as an example. Um, but um, uh, uh, I think uh, you are aware of the uh, situation in, in, in Vilnius and you uh, may be uh, aware of uh, uh, this uh, building that is the uh, bell tower or something next to the Franciscan uh, uh, church. And um, as you may know, uh, uh, this Gothic uh, structure doesn't exist any longer. There is an empty space where this uh, structure used uh, to be. And um, so the, the uh, building is here. It uh, disappears and here we have an, a panel uh, giving some explanation uh, uh, when it was uh, removed and, 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 and why. Now, this information panel uh, was interesting for me because 
it explained the policy of the municipality of uh, Vilnius, uh, saying uh, that they had developed a program called Lost Vilnius, of course I'm using the English uh, version, which was designed, as you can read, uh, for the reconstruction of lost important historical buildings in Vilnius, which is in itself interesting, but topic of another other lecture, uh, the ethics of reconstruction. Uh, is it ethical uh, to reconstruct buildings that have disappeared? Well, I won't go into this uh, palace in the center, um, but it's uh, uh, the rebuilding of the palace is part of a, a larger uh, program um, aiming at the investigation, conservation, and exhibiting of buildings most significant to the history of the city. The project also attempts, when possible, to restore missing structural parts which are critically important for the preservation of a relevant architectural and urban character. The historical self-awareness of the residents of relevant communities and the cultural tourism will be promoted. That, I think, is extremely interesting. That intrigues me so much. Uh, what do they mean uh, in this context? Uh, reconstructing buildings uh, uh, what do they mean with historical self-awareness? Historical self-awareness of relevant communities. But relevant communities as long as they are still residents of Vilnius. So there's a whole world behind it. A very, for me, a very interesting case study about the use of this term community. So they are following a contemporary uh, professional discourse about communities. Yeah? Monuments, buildings, uh, uh, heritage belongs to a community or different communities. So are we speaking about one building being the heritage, being related to a variety of communities? Or do we relate the building to just one community? Is there sort of rightful ownership? Which community can say that it's, it owns a certain building? Is there maybe a sort of shared ownership? And of course, as you will understand, I'm speaking about intellectual ownership. I'm not speaking about uh, legal ownership. So what is the intellectual ownership of a building? Is this its constituent community? Is it the community that built the building, that gave order to build the building? Or is it another community that used this building? But to some extent, every building is a landmark in the cityscape. To, to in some way, every Every visitor, every resident, every visitor has a certain relation to that particular building. It's part of his or her identity in terms of the relation between you as an individual and uh, the cityscape uh, where uh, you were born, grew up, or when you were a, a visitor. So what does that mean? Relevant community. If it is this uh, tower of the Franciscan uh, church, uh, what is the relevant community? Is this this Franciscan community? Is this the Roman Catholic community? How inclusive or how exclusive is it? Is this tower explicitly not part of the uh, Russian Orthodox community? Not part of the identity of the uh, Jewish uh, community. Uh, what does it say about the uh, Roman Catholic community? It was a Roman Catholic church, but what does it include? Does it include Lithuanians? Does it include Poles? Does it include who else? And why is this relevant community restricted to residents? Using the term resident of relevant community, means that implicitly it said, well, you have a relevant community, but part of this rem uh, relevant community is resident. So it suggests that there is also a relevant community that is not a resident. 
otherwise it's, it's no use of speaking about residence of a community. So, but what are the ethical rights of relevant communities, parts of relevant communities that are not resident? Do they have a right? They, obviously, they do not have a right. Obviously, they are excluded from this process, process of historical self-awareness. So, parts of the former parish, eh, the, the, the people living around the building that disappeared and now being reconstructed, people that were forced to leave or left voluntary, they are excluded explicitly, well, in the way uh, 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 it is written, uh, they are excluded from historical self-awareness process. Because it's stupid, they left, yeah? Stupid, they, they are not residents, so they, have, they lost their rights. That is what they're su suggesting. And so I'm intrigued, because you can extend that. Yeah, you can extend the argument. So, uh, what about Polish people that used to live in Vilnius and left? Uh, what about Russian people? Some left, some still there. And what about Jewish people? Uh, what, what about Jewish heritage? What about historical self-awareness of the Jewish community in Vilnius, which was considerable, as you know. There are very few left. Uh, are they the, res uh, the residents? Do they have the rights on historical self-awareness and all the others either being killed or emigrated? Do they lost their rights of being killed or being, uh, 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 being uh, emigrated? But the relevant communities are relevant communities in diaspora. So if we speak about interest and about historical self-awareness, can we relate that to people formerly living in Vilnius and now living in Poland, United States, or when it comes to Jews, uh, Israel. Uh, it's, it's, it's the, uh, the state of Israel a stakeholder in the decision-making process of what is relevant and what should be preserved and what should be rebuilt. Well, of course, I'm exaggerating. I'm stretching the point, but it, I think it, it illustrates the dilemma of inclusion, exclusion. It results from using terms as a uh, uh, community and relevant community and residents of a relevant community. So in using these terms, you are deliberately excluding rather than including. And that is a dilemma, of course. Uh, when it has to be practical, you have to make uh, uh, choices, but basically, uh, can heritage be the heritage of us all? Can museums be the heritage of us all? Yes and, and, and no. And, and there is not a single uh, answer uh, to uh, the basic question of this uh, uh, lecture. And of course, it is for me, perhaps, being an outsider, not being part of any uh, uh, community, although after so many months uh, walking around in Vilnius, maybe I'm also a sort of uh, a relevant uh, community, but I'm not involved in this. I'm uh, not related to the uh, relevant communities that are addressed here. So I'm basically uh, not a, a stakeholder. So for me, it's perhaps easier to speak about it. So allow me um, uh, uh, to use uh, uh, this museum as an example, because here we have the same process of inclusion uh, and uh, ex exclusion, uh, the National Museum, which is a national museum. So it's, uh, it suggests, uh, in the way it uh, uh, promotes itself, it suggests to be uh, reflecting Lithuania, reflecting uh, the identity of uh, uh, Lithuania, the history and identity of uh, uh, Lithuania. Well, you know the museum uh, perhaps better than I know the museum, but as a professional, but naive in the sense of history of Lithuania, uh, uh, what, what, what worries me is this process of inclusion and exclusion. But in the museum, 
this concept of community is not made explicit. It, as far as I could understand, uh, it, it never uses the term community. It does not use the term relevant community. It does not speak about residents of uh, uh, relevant communities, but still implicitly uh, they address uh, a particular community. And that becomes uh, clear in, uh, if you follow the intended routing in, in this part. Yeah? Well, it depends on the context whether you would like to use plural or singular form. Uh, you can say, well, this is community or our communities. Uh, perhaps from a Lithuanian perspective, you see here a multitude of communities, yeah? all different communities. Uh, in Lithuania, and I think that's the idea behind the presentation, to show the variety uh, of intangible, tangible uh, material, uh, 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 tangible, intangible culture. Yeah. And in itself, it's nothing wrong, but in connection uh, with the historical department you have visited before, it becomes, in my opinion, a matter of exclusion without mentioning it. It doesn't uh, say this is Lithuania proper. All communities that are not represented in this room does not belong uh, to Lithuania. But basically it does. But basically it says this is Lithuania and everything else is not relevant. In the historical department, if you try to understand what they say about uh, uh, 16th, 17th, 18th, early 19th century about the history of Lithuania and the people in Lithuania, it hardly differentiates between different communities. But it is uh, what I mentioned uh, before, uh, the, 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 the ethics of inclusion. It's suggesting as if everybody is the same. When you look uh, very closely, you can uh, identify certain objects that belong to certain communities, but they are hardly mentioned by, uh, by, by, by name. So that, to some extent, intrigues me, but also worries me. Uh, what, what sort of process is going on here? What sort of process of inclusion and, and, and exclusion? Why? It's a rhetoric question. I, think I know part of the answer, but why is this concept of Lithuania connected with the rural areas and not the city? Why is it not about cultural diversity of Vilnius? Why is it focusing on rural traditions and only part of these rural traditions? This, I'm using the example nearby, this of course is not unique. Uh, this is the same problem that we have to cope with in Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Netherlands, uh, England. Well, it's, it's a general problem. That why, that's why I think it's so important to reflect upon. What, what are we we're doing? And to what extent is our work uh, biased uh, by um, a 19th century sort of uh, uh, thinking? You um, heard about the opening of the uh, uh, Rijks Museum. Um, the director was there. I have not seen it uh, yet. But we did have the same problem in the Rijks Museum, and perhaps we still do have the same problem. But the Rijks Museum is the national uh, uh, museum, the uh, National Cultural History Museum, and very much uh, from uh, the time the building was, was built in the 1880s, it, it, it is an expression of Dutch national pride, eh? the building and the content of uh, the building. And uh, since there was nothing to be proud of of the 19th century, it was mostly about the 17th century. Um, only recently, the new uh, Rijks Museum, the, uh, the narrative extends uh, uh, to uh, the, 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 the present. But this museum, being the National Museum of the Netherlands, did have a collection of costumes from the rural area of the Netherlands. At the beginning of the 20th century, 
it was considered to be appropriate uh, to have this definition of what it was, is Dutch, in the National Museum in Amsterdam, the capital uh, city. But uh, the uh, director and the curators were not very happy uh, with that and wanted to get, get rid of these costumes. So the costumes, uh, they uh, were, as soon as it was possible, uh, soon after the museum was created, uh, transferred to the Dutch Open Air Museum in Arnhem. Because, and that is, I think, an uh, interesting sort of concept, maybe typical for the Netherlands, because it was felt uh, that it was necessary to make a distinction between the west of the country, uh, being a very urbanized country, that was one story about the Netherlands, and the other narrative was about rural areas. And there was hardly a connection. So there was this rural area, which was actually, as I told you, I'm from Amsterdam, yeah? but it was second rate. Yeah? It was, it, it, they had their own museum, but it was far away from where we lived. Yeah? We had our urban identity, which was very much connected with this 17th century as a point for, for identification. But the interesting thing is now uh, that we see it coming together. And in particular, uh, this uh, uh, open air museum, founded somewhere in 1918, 1919, um, this uh, 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 open air museum, uh, what, what was seen, especially in Nazi time, as an expression of what was genuine Dutch, unspoiled by internationalism, uh, the, the genuine. Uh, 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 Netherlands identity, now that museum tries to catch up with what Netherlands had become. There's rather any rural area uh, uh, left. It's multicultural. And this is how costumes are used now. A completely new definition of identity and uh, diversity and the confrontation exchange mutual enrichment of identity. So in this open air museum, you have this traditional costume, you still have these traditional uh, costumes, uh, but they are connected uh, with new sort of costume, new material culture in this particular case. This woman left is coming from uh, uh, Suriname. <laughs> and even the city came into this open air museum, uh, but always was rural, uh, with uh, farms uh, now uh, have a part of Amsterdam. A part of Amsterdam is included in this open air museum by uh, using uh, the method of open air museum to show uh, it's something, it's a more complete picture uh, of, uh, the, uh, of, of, of the country. So you see two authentic houses from the center of, uh, of, 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 of Amsterdam. And um, um, uh, they also um, uh, added the material culture of migrant groups. So somewhere in, uh, in, in the center of this open air museum, uh, you have a Chinese restaurant, a genuine Chinese restaurant showing something about migration, new group, uh, uh, immigrant groups, enriching the cultural diversity of the Netherlands. So, this museum is an example um, of <clears throat> a, a, a museum that is aware uh, of definition of community and is aware of these dilemmas of inclusion and exclusion. And they have a policy of distinguishing between different groups, making these differences uh, explicit, but at the same time using it uh, to show the complexity of the uh, uh, Dutch uh, uh, country and Dutch uh, identity. Um, another <clears throat> example of um, inclusion, exclusion um, uh, from an other, completely other sort of uh, context uh, here in uh, Berlin. This uh, used to be the historical museum of West uh, Berlin. And, uh, one department of this historical museum was the Jewish Museum. It started as a Jewish department. 
which makes sense that uh, a, a Jewish population, Jewish community was part of the Berlin community at large. The tragic uh, decision, in my opinion, was to separate the story of Berlin from uh, the story of the Jewish uh, community. As you know, after the unification of, of Berlin, uh, there was one uh, uh, museum of the city of Berlin, being the Märkisches Museum in former East Berlin. So uh, uh, this uh, building became uh, available and um, there was a, a new wing built uh, for the Jewish Museum and now uh, the Jewish Museum is occupying the whole building, the new Liebes uh, uh, wing and the old Baroque uh, uh, building. So it, 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 it's a pity because it, it is a sort of uh, exclusion. They separate the story of Berlin from uh, the story uh, of the uh, uh, Jewish population of Berlin. The same happened in, in Amsterdam and in other places as well. And the initial situation was so interesting because, uh, as you can see, this uh, new wing was not directly connected with this baroque wing. Uh, maybe some of you have visited the museum. When you enter this baroque building, you have to go down and up in the new building, showing that there uh, was a tension, tension between uh, the, the history of the Jews in Berlin and Berlin history. Uh, there was not, not an easy connection. Uh, and that was visualized in how the wing was attached to uh, the, the main building. Now this is sort of lost uh, because the whole uh, building, of the, both uh, buildings are now the Jewish uh, uh, Museum. So Jewish history here is isolated to some extent uh, from major uh, uh, history, which I think is a, 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 a pity. At, at the same time, it emphasizes uh, the identity of the, the problem around the identity of the museum. Is it a community museum? Is this a museum that expresses the identity of one particular group? But for whom? What, what, uh, the constituent community, maybe the Jewish community, the source community, maybe the Jewish community, but the contemporary community, uh, the community uh, that you want to address. Is this this Jewish community in Germany or elsewhere? Or is this uh, uh, other communities as well, and how does one relate to the other, and how do you perceive the Jewish community in this particular case? Who, uh, what, what is it Jewish? Yeah? Uh, if you ask me, uh, what is it to be Dutch? I don't know, because I'm from Amsterdam, uh, another person is from Rotterdam, and we don't, well, we don't we do share something, but we also do not share something. Um, so what does it mean uh, if this is about Jewish community? Uh, is there a diversity within the Jewish community that is included, uh, excluded? The museum, that's why I'm using this museum, uh, is interesting because it's aware of this dilemma and it's making this dilemma part of uh, its, its own uh, narrative. And at the moment, uh, there is an, uh, an exhibition uh, um, about uh, what does it mean to be Jewish? What is Jewish identity? Uh, how do individual people perceive Jewish uh, identity? And you may have read about uh, this exhibition because uh, they do have living exhibits. Uh, the, uh, here you have a showcase with a living Jew. So uh, it was, as you know, Germany, everything is a problem in, in, in Germany. Uh, so it's much discussed. And, and here, this is a living person. And you can uh, speak uh, to this uh, person. You can have a, a discussion. And so it is a very interesting uh, way uh, to make these dilemmas that I'm speaking about as a core theme of the, of, of, of the museum. And that is, I think, uh, 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 something like the uh, uh, solution that I was uh, indicating uh, on uh, uh, earlier. Uh, um, in another way, <coughs> uh, here in Rotterdam, 
uh, just to show you, to prove you that uh, we in Amsterdam also respect the people in, in Rotterdam. This is the Rotterdam Museum, one of the most advanced museums in uh, uh, the Netherlands in the sense uh, that they uh, took another uh, consequence from this idea of community and this idea of source community, constituent community, uh, contemporary community, and how to merge these communities. If you are going to uh, Rotterdam, uh, you cannot visit the museum because the building is closed. Where the permanent uh, galleries used to be, that building is closed. It is sort of museum in diaspora. They do have a website, and in fact, the website is the framework of a multitude of activities. And these activities are activities developed uh, in connection with a diversity of communities. So all these uh, uh, activities are by definition community activities. Communities living in Rotterdam, in different neighborhoods. And the interesting uh, 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 difference between the Jewish museum and this museum is uh, that their definition uh, of community is more open. The definition of the Jewish museum is quite closed yeah, because there is a more or less clear definition of what is Jewish. Uh, and whether it's a religious or ethnic or cultural definition, uh, that is not uh, relevant at this moment, but there is a clear uh, a definition. There is not a clear definition, but what it means to uh, be a, a citizen of uh, Rotterdam. And uh, they're playing with this. And here you see uh, officially uh, a, a, a person uh, with a, a Moroccan uh, background. And uh, uh, she holds a paper uh, which says that a real citizen of Rotterdam that is printed and then every person can fill in what that means to be a citizen of Rotterdam. And now I forgot what she wrote. Oh, I think uh, you can do nice shopping. Uh, well, everybody has his own definition of what it means to be a citizen of, 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 of Rotterdam. But uh, what I wanted to, to say here is that uh, they reconceptualized this um, uh, concept of community. They are going to the neighborhoods and they in, are inviting people living in these neighborhoods uh, to participate in exhibition projects and other sort of cultural projects. And they adopted the idea of pop-up museum. Uh, I don't have the time, I have to finish more or less. But um, um, uh, uh, the, the idea of pop-up museum is a, a popular uh, a museum. It's about uh, temporary initiatives of groups of people uh, that want to share something, yeah? uh, whatever. Yeah? And uh, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they organize themselves or are organized uh, by an agency such as a museum. And um, this is an example, even uh, from, uh, uh, Michel de, de Carlo is a, a, a person who wrote uh, about this idea of pop-up museum. She organized uh, such uh, exhibition, rather pop-up exhibition. Uh, but here you, you see so the situation, some, some tables laid out and people coming together, exchanging uh, ideas, experiences. So in terms of Michel de Carlo, a pop-up museum is about conversation. It's creating conditions of people to have a uh, uh, con conversation. Now, these ideas, uh, redefining um, uh, a community, uh, to open up a community, to be more inclusive in the sense that everybody can contribute, uh, is also connected with this concept of uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, 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 maybe many museums are not uh, using the technique of uh, uh, pop-up exhibitions, but they may uh, use this idea of, of crowdsourcing. And the act of taking a job, traditionally performed by a designated agent, so maybe uh, an exhibition designer, educator, uh, or researcher of a museum, outsourcing it, to um, and uh, now what follows is, I think, extremely important, an undefined 
generally large group of people in the form of an open call. And I think there is an important future of museums, uh, redefining the type of communities uh, uh, that I was uh, referring to before as communities of interest in the sense of undefined, generally large group of people in the form of an open call. It's not the museum who defines to what community you belong. It's not saying as an authoritative institution, you belong to this community, you belong to another community, and you belong to the third community. And I make an exhibition for you, I make an educational program for you, and I publish a book for you. And you are not supposed to go to that exhibition, and you're not to, supposed to buy the book. Because I targeted the exhibition especially for you, and not for the others. Yeah? They, of course, they can enter, but i rather not. I think that this reconceptualizing of community in the sense, as men uh, by the uh, icon uh, code, uh, uh, reconceptualizing it is a community of interest that people can decide themselves to what community they belong. And perhaps today, this community of interest, tomorrow, another community of interest. Uh, yesterday, uh, perhaps I would answer any call about uh, the, the history of Vilnius. Uh, perhaps tomorrow I will answer any call uh, about uh, 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 the history of Konas. And uh, maybe just for one day, maybe for the rest of my life. It's I that decide. And it's not an other agency that decide uh, whether. Uh, 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 I am relevant for this community, whether resident of Nick, of, uh, of, of something. Uh, so, redefining uh, social in in inclusion uh, is uh, uh, access, uh, representation, participation, based on decisions of the user, the uh, uh, participant. And that connects, I think, with new ideas on, on ethics. Social responsibility uh, for the museum uh, means that the museum should develop a relationship with a variety of communities based on trust. Uh, people should trust the museum because the museum is uh, responsible for its own actions and the museum is aware of all these issues and dilemmas. The museum may not have uh, the, the final answers. And the museum, of course, is biased. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the staff of any museum is not a full representation uh, of the population outside the museum. It's not, should perhaps be, uh, uh, but it is not necessary uh, uh, that it is as long as, as long as the museum is uh, uh, responsible. Uh, and that's why this concept of radical transparency is so important. Museums should be radically trans transparent. The museum should be transparent in what it does, explain what it does and uh, why it, it does. And by doing so, uh, it shows that it's socially responsible and is, I think, able to create a, a situation that we summarize with the word trust. Trust is, I think, a key word. Communities, individuals, can a museum be a museum for everybody? I don't know, there is no clear answer, but important is that people can trust the museum. Thank you very much.